Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wildcast. I'm your host, Calvin Coyles. I'm joined by the rather remarkable Kyle Sullivan, who's uh, calling in from the US of A. Uh, let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen, as we join today. What is a Division One athlete, a drug dealer, a husband, a pastor, a father, and a founder of a coaching company have in common? Uh, you might say not a lot. In this case, you've got Kyle Sullivan, right? You've got that incredible story. And uh, we're going to dive and unpack into that. He is a father of two beautiful kids. And I'm not just saying that. They are beautiful kids. Check them out on, on Instagram as well. And uh, we're going to be talking about how to unleash the champ uh, and that champion mindset and what does it mean to go on, on a championship run and, uh, and how to be able to make sure you align your life for a greater purpose than what you're currently playing at as well. So in the short time we've already spent together, I'm, uh, I'm just pumped for this call. It's going to be fucking phenomenal. Uh, Kyle, welcome to the podcast, brother. Absolutely, Calvin. I am excited. And uh, if the indication at any time before we started actually recording, this is going to be an incredible show. Yeah. Well, man, look, I saw that uh, that intro piece there, which is what does a Division One athlete, a drug dealer, a husband, a pastor, a father, and a founder of a coaching company have in common? And I thought, like, bet I don't need to know any more than that. This is going to be a great conversation. So maybe let's start by unpacking that. Uh, that's probably a good place to start. Absolutely. So, gosh, all of those, when I see them and hear them in the totality, it's like, man, I've been through some stuff. Yeah. All of it leading up to even husband, father, all of those things, it started with me wanting to be accepted. Mm. So the D1 athlete was spurred out of, I played football, uh, American football, yep, uh, baseball, and did powerlifting right. like, through high school. Okay. Well, what your listeners can't see is I'm about 5'8 on a good day with the right <laughs> amount of product in my hair and the right shoes on. <laughs> so there's got there's a lot that has to happen for me to hit that, but I have proof that I can I can do it. Yeah, yeah. That's your PB. 5'8 that, is your PB. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so I just wasn't I wasn't good enough to make the team. Now, the strength and conditioning coach for the university was married to the cheerleading sponsor. So I competed in college in cheerleading. Right. So that's the D1 athlete piece. Within that, I was stereotypical college student, went wild, parents hovered over me growing up. Yep. I got a taste of freedom. And I'm like, I'm about to go crazy. <laughs> And so I got into, got into drugs. All of it was from a place of wanting to be accepted. Yeah. Because what isn't in that first statement is another season of my life is my dad was a senior in high school when I was born. Six months after I was born, my biological mom left. Oh, wow. And she could walk into my house right now. And I think she's a stranger. I have no clue who she is. Oh, Wow. And that started right. this void in this yeah, yeah, planet in this the need to be accepted. Mm. And so, so much of the destructive things in my life leading up to when I got jumped at a drug deal. And again, if your listeners can look at their right hand right now, I have a scar on my right index finger right. and my right pinky where I was covering up my eye and my nose as I literally got the hell beat out of me. Shit. And I had one guy that I knew from church that I trusted. And so I call him and I said, I need effing Jesus. I just didn't abbreviate anything. And he said, okay, come over. And Calvin, I, I was probably on like a three-day binger at that point. And I, he leads me in his prayer, talks me through it, all of this stuff. And accept Christ on his front porch in between drags of a cigarette. Shit. Wake up the next morning. He comes down the stairs. I stay at his house. Comes down the stairs. I said, what do I do now? Quit everything cold turkey. The next two, three, four months were the hardest of my life. Because I had to detox all of it. And I, oh. it wasn't like, oh, I just smoke a little weed here. Here and there, it was Coke, Crystal, and Ecstasy were my my things. Ah. Well, if you're going to do it, do it to the best of your ability. You did it well. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right. And, and so that detox, and so I got involved in a local church. Right. And 
And I'll tell you, that was the last place I ever thought I would find myself. Yeah, that's well, quite a 180. Because I was, I, I, I had a drug problem before I had a drug problem because my parents drugged me to church as a kid. Mm. And I couldn't stand it. I started going to middle school, high school, could not stand it. Didn't understand it. Thought it was weird people talking to a weird person that you can't see, but y'all feel, I don't know what this, I don't know what this is. Yeah. Whatever. And so I just started going because I then had a actual encounter with who I called Jesus. Hmm. And so I just started going to church. And it was one thing after another that just led to, hey, we need this, this thing done. Okay, cool. I'll do that. Hey, can you lead this group of people? Yeah, sure. I can do that. Hey, can you whatever? Yeah, sure. My yes was on the table. And I think that's important to know that like when we are taking these steps in our life and we're overcoming or we're going towards whatever it is that we're called to do, we just have to have our yes on the table. And as doors open, we Mm. walk through them, Mm. which led me to go back Mm. to school to get my degree. And I moved to a state I'd never been to chasing a girl, which has worked out great because we have two kids and we've been married for eight years and started working at churches, you know, that it could only be God that I got to work at a place that Uh, one church is called Life Church in the States. They have 36 locations in 11 states. Wow. Another. And so I worked there for about seven years. And that was the first taste of leadership development and personal growth. And our one of our kind of axioms was you got to have the heart of a pastor, but the mind of a businessman. Mm, I like that. And so we operated like a like a company, like an organization. That's what we were. We had over a thousand employees. We wow. had people, you know, like it was it was a mid size organization. It just so happened to be a church. Yeah. And then I got to be a part of a, another church on staff called Transformation Church that went from three, 400 people in a converted grocery store to within 18 months, we bought an arena to do church in. One of our pastor's sermons went viral and we went from having, you know, three, 400 people live, maybe a thousand watching online to now two to 3,000 people watching sermons every week. Globally, I, I got the opportunity to run all of our groups. So small groups of people meeting together all in the States. We had groups in Sydney, Australia, in France, in wow. uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and yeah. all of these places. And so I've got to do all of this stuff and loved it. And then mm, October 5th, 2019 at 1247 a.m., my world changed. Your world's about to change, Calvin. Yeah. It's when I held my little girl for the first time. Mm. And I remember them saying, okay, you can go back to the room. So I'm pushing this bassinet with this little girl that in a matter of minutes has captured my heart. Mm. And I had one goal. I knew I wanted to give her presence of time, not just presence of things. Mm. And I didn't know how that was going to happen. I just assumed when I'm available, I got to be all in. That was, that was the extent of it because I was going to retire a pastor. I loved what I got to do. I got to be a part of a global ministry impacting the world. And then March of 2020 happens, which we all know what happened. Yeah. The world shuts down. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a believer that when we are disrupted, it causes us to, it it causes reflection. Mm -hmm. And so I'm working at home. Zoom becomes the norm. My wife's working from home. My daughter's four and a half months old at the time. And I get used to being here at home 
being able to see those milestones of her life yeah. of, wow, she can keep her head up and not fall over now. Wow, she could sit up. Oh, she pulled up. Oh, she she rolled over. All of these things that if I was doing the nine to five and working the weekends yeah. at the church, I would have seen it, but it would have been after the fact, on video, in pictures, and I would have wished that I could have seen it in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then June of 2020, our staff is on a call and our lead pastor says, hey, we're coming back to the office. And I felt two words, it's time. And Calvin, I said audibly, looked up, said, it's time for what? And that's all I heard. And I had some friends that are in the coaching space various industries and they've been on me dude you could do this how you communicate how, your presence and like you have the experience and all this stuff and I'm like nah it's fine I'm good and I talked to my wife and we talk and I just tell her hey I think I think I'm supposed to quit my job she goes oh me you gotta you, you're married you know when your wife hits a couple more octaves up it's like, oh, either she's really intrigued or I'm about to, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. About, I'm about to get it. Yeah. And Calvin, this is what she said. She got a smirk on her face and said, well, Kyle, I think you may be the last person to realize what you should be doing. Mm. Mm. That's all I needed, bro. Mm. And so Unleash the Champ was born and we're off to the races. Nice. Like, that's unbelievable, brother. Um, what a journey, what a story, and only just beginning, only just beginning. And uh, and now you've got that second one as well, one month old, little boy as well. Um, and incredible, incredible. Um, I'm going to come back to the parenting piece in, in just a little bit, but I want to dig into this Unleash the Champ. So talk to me a bit about that. What does that look like? Uh, what are you doing? How are you delivering? What's that model look like? Give us a breakdown. Yeah, absolutely. So the pillars of Unleash the Champ, is your calling, your heart, your altitude, your mindset, and your performance. So whether it is individually, one-on-one, -on -one, or within an organization, those are the pillars that we clarify, enhance, and scale. Oh. So calling, heart, altitude, mindset, and performance. performance. Yep. So all of those, the umbrella that sits under that championship culture is that culture piece because your yep. culture, either personally or professionally, yep. is made up of what you teach, tell, and tolerate. Mm. And so it's being able to go, okay, this is what you say you want. Mm. This is where you say you want to go. Yeah. But then what do you believe about that and how are you measuring it? Yes. And so the pillars build on each other uh -huh. because it's important to have a calling. you got to know like, okay, this is what I'm, I'm put on planet earth to do. Yeah. Your heart is taking care of the relationships most important to you. Yeah. Starting with yourself because the most important person we can take care of is yeah. us. Yeah. Because as it's said, you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup. Yeah. And your altitude uh -huh. Think of that. So your calling is what you're here on. Your heart is protecting those the most important. Your altitude is where you're going. Uh -huh. It's like vision. But my thing with vision is that I can have vision for something in front of me and, I, and not be moving. But with altitude, think of a plane that is reaching the altitude. It implies action. Yeah. It implies and also as well, if you're not taking action as well, you're not going to stay at that altitude, right? Gravity is going to take you back down. Yep. Yeah, I so like that. We, we define the altitude and then your mindset, because before you can affect change in your physical world, it has to be internal to be external. Mm -hmm. And so what is your mindset? What do you believe? What are you visualizing? How are you taking care of what's between the ears so that you can impact what you see with your eyes? 100%. And then the last thing is the performance, because a lot of coaching, um, 
sometimes focuses on more ethereal kind of like woo woo yeah. stuff, which I'm here for the woo, whatever. Like there's some people doing some incredible things with that. But for me, I gear more towards, I think it's my sports background. Yeah. It's the, it's how I was raised. It's all of these things that I understand that like where performance is measured, performance improves. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so if we yeah. aren't setting actionable things that when we get on a call or I show up, you know, stuff is opening back up here, at least in the States for now, you know, if I show up and we go, okay, what's the progress? Uh-huh. And so those are the pillars of Unleash the Champ and um, the two verticals of personal, one-to-one, or professional. Love it. Fantastic, man. And um, you know, if, you're a, a, a per, if you've got a personal client, uh, what does that, um, that cadence look like? Is that a weekly thing, a monthly thing? Uh, do you do it over, a, you know, you've got, what, six, uh, six ver- five verticals there, um, or five, five, uh, five pillars? Yeah. Is that covered over like five weeks, for example? How does that work for an engagement perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So it is weekly calls. Mm-hmm. I would do it 45 minutes, quick nice. hits. They're super focused. Um, we can we can be as to catch up in between calls. Because yeah. um, I I have people, we message, I have some clients to talk to every day. Correct. Because we're working on specific things that need a lot of. Yeah. And then I have some clients that are like, yo, homie, I'm good. Okay, great. Yeah hit me up when you're not. And so nice. it's a uh, very customizable and yeah, it grows. Great. And so it. it's ongoing. So think of it as a, uh, a coach on retainer. Yeah. 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 It's just a good model. Nice. And Excellent. So, so yep. and with then, that in mind, you know, for the average person that's out there, you know, they um, they're, you know, maybe kicking some goals, maybe they're not kicking goals. And you know, what do you see is the, the 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 normal problem that presents the presenting problem for majority of people that are looking to get to that next level? Uh, and I'm interested to then build on this is to go, okay, great. Well, it's it. What, what do you have to have in place effectively is my question in order to go on what you refer to as a championship run, right? What does that look like? Yeah. yeah. So I call the championship run. It's just my take on the the dash between the dates on your tombstone. So we know that the two most important days on planet earth that we get to experience is the day we're born and the day we discover why. Uh. And so the, the championship run is that dash between the dates on your tombstone. And so it is your calling, your heart, your altitude, your mindset, your performance. It's the totality of who we are. So being able to go, okay, the biggest problem is that we've willingly walked into cages of comfort, of security, of routine. And the hardest question that most have to answer is what do you want? Uh. Because we are conditioned from a young age to be told what we want, to be told what we should be like, to be told what is possible for us. And so well-intended people, circumstances and situations put these cages around us. And it's those willing to say, is there more? Could I do this thing? And when you start to ask those questions and you start to expand what's possible for you, Uh. then it's going, okay, now we can go here. Uh. Another vein is people who have solved the money problem in their life, but at what sacrifice? Uh. Because the problem for some of my clients that I get to work with is they are laser focused, sold out, amazing Uh professionally Uh but their kids don't want to be around them Uh and their wife is more of a roommate than a soulmate Uh i like that and what we get to work on is when you become holistically complete you actually make more impact influence and have more in income awesome because I don't care, and I, I don't care how good your business is, 
how's how's those people most important to you your heart how do they say you're doing Mm. and so those are some of the things on the personal side yeah the professional side the biggest question yeah is do my employees care about this place as much as i do Mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that you know we always like oh you got to be an owner you got to be an owner People will never be an owner, but they need to care and have the handbooks not just be something that is on the shelf, but it's actually in their heart. Mm-hmm. And so when you create that championship culture, your people are excited to come to work. You reduce turnover because people don't leave organizations, they leave leaders. Mm-hmm. And so when you develop your team, when you coach your leaders and you create synergy from people being siloed Mm. that is when you actually have a place that's fun to be a part of that you can grow and your people love to be a part of it Uh, uh uh good stuff i like it i like it a lot that's um i like the quote there are people don't leave organizations they leave leaders I think that's an important one. And of course, as well, what I would say is if you're out there and you're an individual operator or you've got a small business, you know, it's it's not to say that they've left your organization, that you're just at a different stage of your leadership journey, right? And, you know, as you evolve and change, it makes a big difference. I really resonate with what you were talking about before, which is, you know, talking about the dash between the numbers, where people have sort of resigned themselves to that sort of mental prison. At Wild, we talk about this framework, right? So you can live a wild life or you can live a life of captivity. And so we take animals from the wild, we put them into to, to prisons, zoos or, or captivity, because it's not safe for them. Well, we, we're saying we know better, it's not safe for them. We, but we do this with people. And we've seen this manifest, obviously, with COVID recently, where people have literally been locked indoors, saying you can't leave the house, it's not safe to do that. People were doing that mentally long before we were ever told to stay indoors and self-isolate. Like they were isolating themselves if they're not confident to go out there. They're, they're not pursuing their goals and dreams because it's not safe to do so. So, you know, the uh, most people are just experiencing in reality what was already happening subconsciously for so many for such a long time. 100%. And uh, I love that y'all use that imagery as well because one yeah. of the talks I, I give is a lion at the zoo. Mm. What is the lion at the zoo never doing? That that mother trucker is always on a rock. Yeah. Chilling. Not moving. Why? Because he knows where he's getting fed. He knows when he's getting a bath. He knows. Yeah. But I've never been on it. Like bucket listing is an African safari. Yep. But I've seen enough documentaries to know that a lion in the wild. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, you bet. You, they're constantly moving. Constant. That's why they're called the king of the jungle. Yeah. Until they get put in yeah. captivity. I love exactly. it, man. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, now obviously having, uh, you know, a, 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 an almost two-year-old and, uh, and a, a brand newborn as well. Talk to me about the impact that's made on your perspective around that championship mindset and and the importance of having a holistic approach to life. Give me Give me some insights there. Oh, Calvin, man, you uh, you may have to edit out if I if I get choked up. Um, <laughs> no, it's good. But when when both of my children were born, the it, you get this pressure of like, I've got to get my shit together because mm-hmm. people are watching me now. Uh-huh. And like you know, we get influence, we get people, and whatever. But like. We what we know is that our our kids will will listen to what we say, but they will do as we do. So they're going to look to our actions, not our words, to determine how they navigate in the world. Yeah. And so it changes everything because now it's not just enough to say like. I'm going to go after my dreams. You're actually going to have to do it because one of the things that really spurred me on with my daughter Piper 
is the moment if she gets, you know, say 20 years from now, she get a big decision. Does she stay where she's at or does she go? And it, it's kind of unknown, but ton of possibility. And I would, as a dad, say, you got to take the opportunity. Like, you got to go, girl. Like, you can do this. I mean, but you got to go, dad, as well. And I never wanted her to say, but you didn't. Mm. I mean, Calvin, that would have, that, in my head, it mentally crushed me. Yeah. And I was like, my version, my definition of success is getting to the end of my life with as little what ifs as possible. It's not houses and cars and things, which is all nice and good and well, whatever. But I don't want to sit, you know, if I get the opportunity to be on deathbed and know it's going to happen and all of this stuff, I don't want to replay very many times where I said, man, what if I did that? What if I, what if I took that opportunity? Yeah. And so with kids, it's like, I want them to see dad, like, fail i want them to see dad you know swing and miss i want dad to i want them to see dad freaking crush it because all of it is going to produce in them go man my dad's crazy but he keeps going for it mm. Mm. Like, like calvin i'm 51 percent sure that this is gonna work how it is in my head and that's all i need brother yeah 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 i like that i like that a lot i was um I was talking to uh, my wife, actually, when we were when we were trying to conceive. It took us a little while to get there. I thought we'd get it straight away. As a guy, you think, fuck, it's easy, right? But it's not. <laughs> right. And, uh, we uh, Anyway, the, they came back. We got some testing and stuff done. And, the, the, you know, you're meant to have, I don't know, what is it? Uh, I think it's like 300 million uh, sperm. And, uh, and my test came back at like 6 million or something. So a big difference. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I've done more with worse odds. I only need a, I only need one chance, right? Um, but that that mindset, right? It's like, hey, yeah. girl, give me a 51, 49, any day of the week, right? Like we, right. we can do amazing things with that. So I think that mindset is so important. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, you talk about the idea of getting my shit together because people are watching. I'm already aware of that, right? Like I've been thinking about that more and more in my own life uh, because obviously our little one's on the way very soon. And um, I'm just sitting here reflecting on my day and just thinking about when you mentioned and that I'm going, okay, I've got a full day today. I've got this podcast with you and then I've got a heap of sales appointments and opportunities. And right now I'm not making a trade off or a sacrifice, but if my little one's at home, I've got a choice. Is this, a, not, not this call because I'm really enjoying this, but you know, I can, I know that some of the calls I'm going to have later on today are, are going to be, you know, maybe even be painful. It's like, is there any, is the extra one sale, is that worth the extra hour? You know, would I rather, would, would I want my, uh, my little girl at home going, well, uh, daddy could have spent that hour with me, but he decided to stay at work one extra hour to make one extra sale. At one point, there's one extra sale not make as much difference in the grand scheme of your life, right? And you just right. It applies a different level of focus, which I'm actually quite excited about. I think that's a really important point. Um, talk to me about um, about your faith. I don't get to speak to a lot of people that are, um, well, see pastors, right? That's that's a that's a huge one. But you know, there's there's a lot of people that I speak to when I dig deeper into their psyche and their psychology and what they think has allowed them to be tremendously successful. More often than not, some uh, different um, reference point for faith or divine guidance or spirituality or connectedness or presence or blessings in their life, it shows up, right? It's, it's, a, it's a universal and successful people, uh, but I can speak to you in a quite clear lens around what that means for you. So talk to me about what your faith represents, what that means for you, uh, what your experience of that is and, and how that has made an impact for you. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a Jesus guy. Uh, yeah. And my faith for me is when I look at all that I've been through that I shouldn't have made it out of. All that I did to myself, all that was done to me, mm. and yet I'm still here. Mm. I mean, Calvin, I, I totaled four vehicles in like my first two years of driving. I was terrible. They shouldn't have given me a license. They sure shouldn't have let me keep it. 
like there's just so many things that when I look back and the moment the moment that it made sense, it couldn't not make sense anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I had been in church and heard about Jesus and all this stuff for years. And I was like, nah, I'm good. And also going through that, getting jumped at a drug deal, the next handful of months where there, I could not have done it on my own strength. Mm-hmm. And it had to be who I know to be the work of Jesus in my life. Yeah. And as I started reading, reading the Bible, I started going to school. Like when I think about, so in the Bible, it talks about like Jesus is talking to his disciples, his, his people that he'd been doing life with for three and a half years and, or three years. And he says, Hey, I got to go. It's talking about his crucifixion. And he said, but who I'm going to send will allow you to do more and greater things than me. Now, for your listeners that may not like subscribe to the Bible or whatever, like in the Bible, there are stories where Jesus fed thousands of people. He healed lame people that could the paralyzed. He gave sight. He like when we truly think, OK, hold up, Jesus, um, that's cool and all. But you have like the hall of fame of healing. And I have the power through your work in my life to do greater things. Huh. And, you know, people talk about, you know, law of attraction. People talk about manifesting. All that stuff is rooted in the Bible. Hmm. If people actually would read and you know there may be some christians listening to this and like what he's a heretic because that'll get some dicey in some christian circles yeah but my faith for me is i just put the bible to the test the bible talks about i want to give you an immeasurably more life that more than you can ask or imagine mm. there's a verse that says you are god's masterpiece i'm sorry I've seen a couple masterpieces in museums, wonders of the world. They're they're pristine. They're perfect. And that's what the Bible says about us. You're a masterpiece. Hmm. Created in Christ Jesus. So that's whose we are. That's what I believe as a Christian. And it's the second part of this verse gets me. And it says, created to do good works, which is awesome. Great. Cool. Whatever. We we hope to do that. And here's the kicker that I prepared in advance for you to do. Uh. So if we believe that Ephesians 2.10, which is that verse, that we're a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus, it's what we are, it's whose we are, for what purpose to do good works. And then the confidence to step into that is that it's already decided. Uh. And you'll hear people say like, you know, whatever's, whatever's supposed to happen will happen. You know, karma. People will say, oh, I just believe in karma. It's, it's Bible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, you know, I believe in the universe. It's Bible, because who created this whole thing? Yeah. And so for me, my faith is so central, and I can appreciate how people have tried to understand it and they've created these modalities of explanation. And so I love, you know, I'll have conversations with people that are like, forget Jesus, but I love, you know, crystal or, you know, crystals or whatever. They're very like woo woo. And I'm like, cool. Like, I think, I think you're kind of talking about my thing, but that's okay. We won't go there yet. Um, But for me, my faith is so central because I think about all I've gone through. I think about what's ahead of me and the confidence is going, it's done. Like Mm. I win. Mm. Mm. I'm reminded of a, um, of a quote from uh, Sir Winston Churchill, who obviously led uh, the UK, Great Britain during the second world war. And, um, 
I sort of stumbled upon this when I was doing some research on him. Uh, I'm a ring, a ring, uh, originally British. And um, Churchill, when the Nazis were bombing London uh, during those nighttime raids, he would go out with his bodyguard and he would walk the streets of London because he just wanted to get a feel for how the how the country was dealing with it. And his bodyguard obviously was freaking out. It's like you're the leader of of, uh, of of the of the resistance. Let's get back inside, please. He says, "No, no, no. There's a man upstairs that's given me a job to do, and he intends for me to see it through." That was his faith that he was he was put as a divine, you know, you know as, uh, as Mother Teresa once said, be a pencil in the hand of God and write a new chapter in your life. He was there to write that chapter and he believes he was called for for that specific moment to be of service. So I really I, 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 I haven't um, I haven't read the Bible. It's it's on one of those things. It's a long list of things to do. Um, and it's obviously I think for some people, if you're not particularly motivated to read it, it's a difficult text, I would imagine, to get into. But um I, um, I, I think it'd be good for me to read. And I also want to read as well the Bahid Gia as well. And um, uh, the, I think it's the Bhattava uh, Gita, mm-hmm. which is the, the, the Buddhist one and, uh, and the Quran as well. Yep. Um, put it all on the list. I'm interested to explore something with you. And I, this something just came to me and I thought I'd ask you about it. So in, in my faith, uh, so I'm uh, christened Church of England, um, but I don't I don't practice that. I don't go to church, right? But I have a very strong spiritual faith, and I do believe in that guidedness. And a lot of the same things you're talking about there, I deeply resonate with. Um, I'm interested to get your insights in terms of the distinction between you being uh, or us here living this life experience as being sort of a uh, a creation, a manifestation of God's will, right, or of that divine. And and how much the you know obviously a pillar of the Christian faith is that you know Jesus is that sort of you know reference point. So when you talk about the idea of you had that experience of knowing Jesus, are you really saying you had the experience of knowing God effectively, or are you saying that you the literal experience of of Jesus? And what's the differentiation or the separation there as well? Because I've I've not spoken to somebody about that. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Yeah. So I love this man. This is this is taking a turn, and I love it. I'm here for it. So. In theology, Christian theology, it's God three in one. So three expressions of God. So you got God the Father, who is his his status is creator. Right. Right. So he created the world, everything in it, put the barriers up, all that. And what's interesting is when people reference God, you have to understand that his, his purpose, his assignment was done at creation. Right. So then the second expression of God is God, the son in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Jesus sent from heaven to earth, manifested all human, all God for a purpose, go on a cross, save humanity. When he said it is finished and he was put, rose, came back, started the church, and went back, the Bible says he is seated. So his purpose is done. Now, the third piece is what gets Christians a little like, I don't know what to do with this, is the Holy Spirit. That is the manifestation of God that is active in our lives. And so for me, when I encountered, when I said, man, I encountered, I accepted Christ, I accepted Jesus. In that moment, the Holy Spirit is what is manifesting inside of me. Gotcha. That is the experience that we feel. Gotcha. So I've had many experiences where I walk into an environment, like a church or a conference or whatever, and I just feel something. Like you'll hear, you'll hear some people say like, man, the, the atmosphere, there's something here. So for me, Calvin, the, the manifestation of God working in my life is through the Holy Spirit, Uh but all of it is God. Yes. Yes. It's just, it is, it's almost like I've heard pastors say, like water, ice, and steam are the same makeup, just three expressions. Yes. Yes. It's the same. It's a good God analogy. The Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
Yeah, thank you. I never, um, I never, I've, obviously you've, you heard, I mean, just remember that song, right? Um, uh, I can't remember actually all the lyrics, but you get the idea of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, and um, I've, I've heard that expression before, but I never, actually no one ever actually explained that to me. And to be fair, I never actually went looking for the answer uh, around what that expression is, but that really makes a lot of sense to me. I understand those reference points in terms of where that's at as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think maybe perhaps, and I'm, I'm, I'm well and truly speaking out of turn here, but really just referencing some of the things that you said, is I think that perhaps that uh, the, the one, perhaps one of the most important legacies within uh, Jesus's purpose here is, uh, is to be the expression of the Holy Spirit in terms of what is possible for that, right? Like you talk about that long list of accomplishments, right? Yeah. Imagine before that period of time, there's not a great awareness of what can be possible when you're living through that faith. It's like, hey, we'll send you, here's, here's, a, here's a champion that's going to break the four minute mile, right? And Roger Bannister. And so now, okay, cool. Now all of you can run the four minute mile, even if he never runs again, right? So that same reference point of going, hey, I'm going to be a proxy for you in terms of, hey, I'm going to live from this accordance. Look at what I accomplished and achieved. Now I'm going to go now, but now I've left a reference point for you to say, if you embody the same belief systems that I have, that you can go out there and live a life that is more purposeful and go further beyond than where I was. Right. Absolutely. And if you, if you read the Old Testament, you know, it's like the the BC and like, yeah, it was all these laws. Hmm. It was all these rules. It was very much religion, right? Hmm. Jesus comes on the scene and it said that Christ came to fulfill the law. Hmm. So the law was no more. That's when you saw Jews and Gentiles commingling. That was not going to happen before Jesus. Hmm. And so I loved how you said it because it really was Jesus coming to earth was the manifestation of, hey, we have entered a new season. We've mm -hmm. entered a new time. And I'm going to show you what is possible exactly how you said it. I love that. Mm. Mm, fantastic. Um, what... Um... Talk to me about, you know, as well, and we can go on here as well. I'm aware we only have a couple of minutes left. So let me ask you this final question. I think this is going to be a good point for us to finish off. You've got two little kids and we're living in a world which in many cases, whether it don't matter what you, what you believe in, there's a lack of belief globally, right? Uh, and that, you know, um, it doesn't matter if it's Christianity or Islam or, Buddhist, uh, 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 or Judaism or Buddhism, that they're all on the decline. Right. There is an increasing apathy and a lack of belief in faith. Now, some of that is because, you know, if you, you, you look at, um, for example, in, in Australia, there's a there's a sense that, you know, a lot of the institutions that used to educate kids were based in the school systems. Right. So we have a lot of Catholic uh, schools. People not sending their kids to Catholic schools anymore in the way that they were a church and, and faith is not as taught in the schools. So there's a sense that, you know, I was baptized and christened as a kid, but that's just because that was the done thing. When I've got my daughter coming into the world as well, you've got to be really quite purposeful about if that's my faith as well, that's one thing, but is that going to be her faith? And am I going to expose her to a variety of faiths to allow her to experience Jesus or whatever she wants to experience as well? So you've got obviously a little girl, little boy. I'm interested to know for you both being a father, being a, a business owner, and then also being a pastor as well, uh, what that conversation with, with you and your family looks like with regards to faith and, and, and what lessons you want to share with your kids? Yeah, so I'm going to model Christianity hmm. because, like, even now, my little girl, she goes to her children's church when we go to church. But I'm never going to, I'm never going to shut down a conversation that asks questions about it. And I think that's because I grew up right, wrong, or indifferent in a, like, sit down, shut up, be seen, not heard. This is what it is. And I rebelled. Mm. Mm. And it could be about faith. It could be about anything. I want to have a conversation. Mm. I remember and, listening. So you go. And, and so with my faith, it's going to be just like with business, just like they're going to see it exhibited. Mm. And do I do I assume that it predisposes them to be more inclined to Christianity? 
Absolutely. Mm. Is that my hope? For sure. But every believer has this moment of a crisis of belief. Mm. It's the moment where they start, especially kids growing up that are in church, that are in, you know, when I was a pastor, my biggest fear was like, they, it's this term called PK, preacher's kid. They either go exactly straight and narrow into the faith or they are the exact opposite. Because so much of their parents' modality and preference and everything is pushed and pushed and pushed on them that they either comply. Or rebel. Yeah. Or rebel. They're either walk in captivity or they walk in the wild. And so that's my heart is, hey, let's talk about it. I'll give you my perspective. Do your research. If yeah. you want to explore things, explore them. And I'm just going to believe that me praying for my kids every night and me putting them in an environment, they will find their way. Yeah. I remember listening to Mark Wahlberg talk about this and he said um, his, 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 his kids are older now. They don't have to go to church. So I'm not going to force them to go to church. He said, but I'm going to make sure every Sunday I go to church. So they need to see me going to church because if I don't go, they're definitely not going to go. But if I go, at least there's a chance they'll go with me. And so I think that was an important decision. I like that way of him looking at it. He's like, this is important for me. I'm not going to force it on them. But if they if they want to go, I'm I'm going and I'll go every week. And so for him, it's part of him going because it's important to him. But it's also more important that he shows up as a role model for his kids because it's a belief system for himself. Yeah, 100%. I mean, more is caught than taught. Yeah. I think there's a really important distinction there where, you know, there used to be a mindset in parenting, I think, which was, I don't have a lot of stability in my perspective other than just this is the way the world is, right? And so you just have to do it. And it's like, well, that's people don't operate like that. No one operates like that. Adults don't operate like that. And so now there's, I think there's an awareness to go, okay, well, that doesn't work. But what will work is if I keep showing up and modeling the behaviors, like if I want my kids to be healthy, me telling you not to eat shitty food is not going to help if I'm eating shitty food. So I'm going to have to model that behavior. And that doesn't guarantee success, but I'm I'm not actually going to be able to control the outcome. I just have to do the best job I can to influence you to make the right choices. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that, that's, a, that's an interesting path that we all got to follow, right? And it's so different for clients. It's so different for staff. It's so different for obviously family as well. It's important. Uh, Kyle, I have truly loved this conversation. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be the last one that we have. I'm excited to check in into the future as well. Um, but uh, I want to thank you for your time. You know, tremendous. Absolutely. It's been an excellent conversation. I can only appreciate how valuable that is for you as well with, with a brand new one month old. So con- con- congratulations on that and uh, compliments to in- you and your wife. Um, and we wish you every success. How can we find out more about you? What's the next step? How can uh, our clients check in with you? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm most active on Instagram. So if you want to go through social media yep. on there, Kyle J. Sullivan. Uh, if you want to send me an email directly, at kyle at kylejsullivan.com would love to have the conversation if you send me a message send me an email just put the wildcast so we know that you came from uh calvin in this show and man thank you so much this has been really really good hey brother my absolute pleasure man i appreciate it um i'm excited to check in as we move forward and of course we'll put all this stuff in the show notes for you as well so that you everyone can check that out as well uh, but i want to thank you for your time and for everyone that's watching at home or online if you're catching the video, you're watching the, uh, the you're listening to the podcast, please leave us a review and, and send uh, Carl some love. Go and check out some of his stuff as well. We'll put a link to your website as well as part of that. And, and until I see you live online, ladies and gentlemen, and until we see Kyle in the future, be bold, have fun, go make an impact in the world, and we'll see you on the wild side. Hey.